Psalms 41. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Blessed means happy. <clears throat> is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him from the time of trouble. That seems to be a favorite word of, of David. Two words, deliver and trouble. Now, we're commanded to help the poor. But in this day and age, we got to be careful who the poor is. Now, back in the old times, every city, I mean, was walled. Many cities were walled about. You knew who was in the city. In the times of the book of Acts, when James and Peter, the man that had, who was lame in his feet, after they healed the, the people, hey, that's the guy that was, you know, he asked for alms. They knew who he was. Then there was the guy who was blind that Jesus uh, gave sight to. They're like, yeah, this is the guy. You knew who they were. There would be people outside the gate if they had leprosy. And we live in a time and age today that, you know, the cops are too busy doing minor calls. They don't can't go after all the people. And not all people are poor. They have got footage. The news and people with their private camera have got footage of a guy holding a sign, you know, I need food, I need money. And then he walks off a couple blocks away and he gets into a nice brand new Cadillac or Lincoln. That guy ain't poor. They even had expensive sport cars. We had a guy one time we rebuke, he's holding a sign outside of a store, and he said, listen, I get tax-free income. Wasn't even sorry. What I do is, if they, for food, I will give them food. My wife, Tracy, used to have bags. She'd make up in a juice container, canned goods, and some whatever she could find, fruit and stuff like that, and give them. I have invited people to a nearby restaurant, convenience store, and say, listen, I'll take you in there. I'll get you something to eat. And many times, they will show who they are. No, no, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, I'll do it later. I, I, give me the money now. No, I ain't going to give you money because you're going to go buy cigarettes. You're going to get a tattoo. You're going to pay for a prostitute. You're going to get booze. Oh, you're hungry? I'll get you some food right now. I'll take you in this store. I'll take you in this restaurant. And, hey, we had a guy one time. We someone gave him fruit, and when they walked away, my wife saw the guy throw the food away. Throw the fruit away. He's not poor. And a lot of people, a lot of times, they'll want your money for sin. And we got to be wise today to do right. The Lord will preserve. That's another word of David. To keep, upkeep. I mean, we got a thing we call preserves. You take grapes, strawberries, and fruit like that, and you, you make it into a preservative. And you can keep it and use it. And keep him alive. Now, throughout the Bible, and John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon him. That's hell. Every person from the womb, you're conceived. Till you die 100 years old, wherever, how old? You live forever. Your soul moves on and the Christian gets a brand new body. Gets his body regenerated, brand new. A lost man will get a body that's decayed, probably has a worm, the Bible says, but off into hell. You live forever. But the Bible states here in the Old Testament, and John the Baptist speaking in the gospel, if you go into hell, that is no life to be. In the Old Testament, if you're to believe the law and do what God prescribed by the law, that would be your life. In the Gospels, if you're to put your faith and trust in Jesus, that's light. Anything else, though you're going to be living eternally, that's not a light. He shall be blessed upon the earth. Hey, that could be for anybody, but especially for the Jew in that land grant. 
that will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. And we're looking at an Old Testament passage. Because if that passage was not just for the Old Testament, how would you explain Fox's Book of Martyrs? When the enemies got the best of the Christians on this earth. It says, bless on the earth and thou will deliver him, thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemies. On the earth. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that, uh, workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Psalms 41. Two cannot be applied for the church aid because then you would say Stephen didn't die. You would not say all the apostles didn't die violent deaths in the hands of their enemies. Rightly dividing the word of truth, that would not apply for Christians today. There are Christians that are being killed 2020. There were Christians killed 2019, 2018 in the hands of their enemies. There were prophets of God that Jesus took that were killed in the hands of the prophets. I mean, of the, of the men of Israel. So... That's one of them verses you. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. That will make all his bed in his sickness. The Lord will strengthen him on the bed of languishing. Give him. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Again, another verse. I don't know all the answers. I don't have it all. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, proper any age. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. So I guess sinning against God will do your soul illness. For the Christian that sins against God, unconfessed sins, your eternal life could be loss of rewards and crowns and honor by Jesus. My enemies speak evil of me. True. Very much true. Christians who think, no, I'm a Christian and I'm going to be great, great, wonderful people are going to just love me. I'm going to be the talk of the whole town. And I'm going to be honored. And I'm going to be praised. and I'm going to be honored because I'm a Christian. They don't know the life of Jesus Christ. Realize every time Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath, he gathered people together against him and talk. Well, how can we destroy him? And they were angry that he was healing people on the, on the Sabbath day. That angered them. They were speaking evil of Jesus. And yet some people think because they're a Christian, they're going to live above and beyond what Jesus had. When shall, I, when shall he die? Good going, David. And his name perish. Evidently, David had not heard Jesus say, love thy, name, love thy enemies. You see, the Old Testament is far different from the New Testament. Jesus and the apostles and the disciples wrote to us, the, the epistles to the church, love your enemies. Help them. Do good then, then persecute. David, kill them. Beat them up, Lord. Destroy them. David, they're going to hell. They utterly, refusely reject God in his word, in his law, in his testimony, in his tabernacle, and everything that God, God go get them, go kill them. But we are in an age of grace and mercy. Go out there and witness to them. Well, Lord, they're infidels. They won't get saved. Do we kill them? No, you just pray for them. And go to somebody else. 
See, a person, I want revenge on those that won't turn. I want revenge on those that won't convert to my religion. I want, I want God to kill all my enemies. You're back in the Old Testament, and we're not in that day and age. You would defile the teachings of Jesus in the book of Matthew. Jesus said, if a man takes your coat, give him two. If you can possibly go one mile, go two miles. And if he come to see me, the one that's speaking evil of him, he speaketh vanity. Nothing. Empty. Everything he said to me, it's just vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. He's just wicked and vile. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. He's boasting of himself. You know, I wouldn't talk to David. David wouldn't talk to David, you know, David hates me. Fine person David is. Nice Christian David. You know, yeah, he wants me dead. David isn't a Christian. David's a man after God's heart and you hate God, David hates you. I hate the Catholic Church. I hate the Jehovah Witnesses. Now, Someone's going to cut and split. I do not hate the Catholic people and I don't hate the Jehovah Witnesses. There's a big difference this day and age. I hate the traditions of the church, but man, I, if I have opportunity, I will witness to a Catholic and I will try to get them to the real Jesus. I will sit in my driveway, stand in my driveway, and I will deal with an open Bible. I will try to deal with a Jehovah Witness on the street to show them that. They're, whatever they're, I don't know what the church, whatever that nonsense is, their hall is wrong. I don't hate them. I got people's names in, in, my, in the, my prayer list uh, who, are, who are Jehovah Witnesses, both presently and no, no longer. I've got Catholics in my, in my prayer list. But as far as the foundation, I get the, 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 I get the Catholic catechism. I got one over here. I hate it. Don't give me that garbage. Somebody comes to me, well, I'm a Catholic. Are you willing to listen? Can I tell you the Bible says, call no man your father? Can I show you in the book of Judges a Catholic priest? Oh, wait a minute. No, there was no Catholic church until after Jesus, correct? Well, yeah. Can I show you a priest called Father who had images and idols in his house in the book of Old Testament Judges? Can I show you that? Can I show you other passages in Scripture? Mr. Jehovah Witness, can I show you in your Bible? I learned the other day from my pastor another great passage in Luke 60. Can I show you that, that your soul sleep is wrong? Even in your body, can I? Now, I'm not angry, and I don't hate the people of the, of the religion. I hate the religion. David says, Listen, religion, David says, When they're going to die, that ain't a religion. Religion doesn't die. That's a person. Religion ain't going to come up to David. How you doing? That's a person. I will not, I, I have not gone into. A Catholic funeral and a Catholic wedding, because I hate that that nonsense. I know the I know the destruction the Catholic Church has done. I grew up Catholic. I got one aunt who I believe is in hell burning today, and I got one uncle I am not sure. My grandpa came out of that and got saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. The most angriest people that ever come. When people come up to me, whatever whatever public ministry I'm doing, and they're, rah, 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 I'll say, Catholic. And then they get angry. Well, how'd you know? Because you're angry. Verse 7. All that hate me, David, whisper together against me. You mean David, a man after God's heart, he has enemies? People hate you mean there are enemies of David? There are people who don't like David. He's a man of God. I'm a man of God. I let my light shine. Everybody loves me. And I look at it like, you ain't nothing. 
Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John says, marvel not, my brother, if the world hates you. Jesus said, if the world hates you, know it hated me first. Now, I don't cause people to hate me. I don't go out, and, oh, who can I find to hate me? I just preach the truth. I just preach the King James Bible. I just live for Jesus. And naturally, the person that's against the Bible, against Jesus, and against what's right, and against the truth, are going to hate you. David had haters. Born again, Bible-believing Christians will have haters. And they'll hate your guts. By the people who say, all the world should have love. Everybody should love everybody. Let's buy everybody a Coca-Cola and get in, all sing in harmony. And then you get a Bible Christian come up, preaches, get that guy out of here. Your family would be like, well, don't, hey, listen, if you invite those morons, those church people, you invite them, we're not coming. You disinvite them. If they're going to come, my family ain't going to come. Because I ain't going to hear their Jesus nonsense. I ain't going to hear his Bible nonsense. That's hate. That's hate. When they don't invite you to your office party, because they don't want your, that's hate. And then the Christian will say, everybody just loves me. No, they don't. They're lying to you. They, they're getting from you. They're taking from you. They don't love you. Against me do they devise my heart. They're trying to hurt me. They're trying to get me down. There are people in Daytona Beach that are trying to shut me down from preaching the gospel. You don't believe me? Go to the 911 station. Go to the police dispatcher and ask them, what do they feel about the idiot preaching at the, at the farmer's market? And they'll tell you, we get phone calls all the time about that guy. Man, we had, yeah, last year, time goes by, last year, a couple years ago, they were calling the cops every single Saturday we were going. We've had the cops sit there watching us. Listen, there's more violent crimes out in Daytona Beach that you've got to have a cop listen to a guy preach the gospel. There are more things going on in Daytona Beach and, and Volusia County, which handles all the calls for the, for the police departments in this area. And you got to call a guy. He's down here screaming about Jesus. We hate him. Get rid of him. Oh, you mean the guy in the street that's asking for money that don't need him? Leave him alone. I don't believe you said that. I did say that. We got people in Daytona Beach and the cops. I listen, I talked to the cops. The cops are, they're, they're paying him. They can't do nothing about it. Excuse me, officer. Why are you here talking to me? Because those people over there at the farmer's market are complaining about you. So you're here about a man preaching Jesus, but you're not out there trying to prevent money from people from losing their money. When people don't deserve to be out there asking for money. So the more violent crime is preaching Jesus than a guy stealing money with a hat or with a sign. Oh, I remember. I remember. Pilate, we'll take the thief. You crucify Jesus. Daytona Beach, 2020. Let the thief panhandle. Let the thief carry his sign. Let the thief steal the dollars. And the, the cop told me that they get tons of money. I won't give you a cop's name. I got his name. He was telling me they make tons of money, but the preacher, we want Barabbas, but get rid of the preacher. They'll hate you. An evil disease. Hey, it's funny. I was doing this with my study. I, I thought, man, you know, this sounds familiar. This is what I was doing with the evil study. An evil disease, says they, cleaveth fast unto him. Talking about David. That guy's got to be a lunatic to be screaming and all that. That guy's got to have something wrong with him. He's not, he, got to, he doesn't have all his marbles. I let my light shine. I live. That's not what Jesus would do. Yes, he did. So did Paul. You're not a Bible reader. You're the one who's got to screw loose. They think there's something wrong with you because you're a Jesus freak. You won't partake in sin. You won't partake in the worldly entertainment. There's something wrong with you. 
Your demean, your demeter is, is your your kooky, your cockeyed. And if you're not cooky and cockeyed to the world, then there's something wrong with your walk. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. We can get him down. We can destroy him. He's not coming back. If the people in Daytona Beach can get rid of my preaching, and be like, hey, good, he's not coming back. I had one time, and we, we've had hospital visits. We had things of sickness. And there's one time we didn't show up for a couple weeks. And we came back. Yeah, hospital, whatever it was, sickness. And a guy who likes us came up to me. They thought you were gone. They thought you were not coming back. They were happy to. And, well, you're wrong. Thank you for telling me that because now you made Psalm 41a. Now, that guy was all for us. I'm saying the wicked people like, yay, we won. We got him. Jesus, verse 9. Yay. That's what the devil said to Eve. My own familiar friend, somebody, it was, he's my friend, but he's as close as a family. In whom I trusted with the bag. Bible says Judas held the bag. That was the money. Judas, Judas was the treasurer. Which did eat of my bread. All right. Judas ate the food of Jesus. He also partook of the Lord's Last Supper. Though Catholics would tell you he did not, but he did, has lifted up his heel against me. You know how you know that, that Judas was the devil? Go to Genesis 3.15. I will show you Judas, Judas with God talking to the, to the serpent who is the, who is the devil. Look at Genesis 3.15. Talking to the serpent. Yay! That's verse 1, but three, 315. And I, that's God, will put enmity between thee, that's the serpent, and the woman, that's Eve, between thy seed, that's the devil, and her seed, that's Jesus. It, Jesus, shall bruise thy head, Antichrist, devil, and thou, the serpent, shall bruise his, Jesus, heal. Mark that. Genesis 3.15 and Psalm 41.9. Judas, the Bible says I, it was either devil or Satan entering into Judas. I forget which it says. But they're the same. There he is. Genesis 3.15. There he is. That was a fulfillment. Judas fulfilled the prophecy of Jesus. And there's another place. Uh, Zephaniah or Zechariah. I forget. Starts with a Z. The 30 pieces of silver. Judas the devil fulfilled the scripture. And before he, you know, when he sold out the 30 pieces of silver, the devil hadn't entered him yet. The devil entered him when he went to go tell the, hey, let's go get him. Now pay me. But he made the deal. When he made the deal, he wasn't the devil. When he collected the money, the, Satan had entered him to him. But thou, Lord, O Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, kill my enemies, but be nice to me. <laughs> That's why people want to live in the Old Testament. I can get land. I can get riches. I can get good crops. I can get money. I can get gold. I can have wives. I can have greatness. I can have my enemies killed. I can be on top of the mountain. That mountain was, was God's mountain. That mountain is Jerusalem. That mountain belongs. To, you know, ever notice how many religions you got to go to a mountain? You got to go to a place. The Catholics, they go to Rome, Vatican City. The Muslims go to, they got three different places, but one of them was Mount, where, where the temple is, the Dome of the Rock. India, they have a mountain they all go to, the Gurus. Going one place, and even that woman in, in John chapter 4, Jesus talking, he said, you know, we shall worship God here, and you say worship him here, and Jesus says, hey, you got to worship God in the spirit. 
But the Old Testament, don't you see the promises of the Jew? Don't you see how great that Jew is? If you do what I tell you to do, I'm going to bless your children. I'm going to bless your cows. I'm going to bless you. And But that's not for the church age. The church age is love your enemies and they're going to persecute you and you love them more. Go in all the world in the gospel, go in all the world with the gospel. What if they hate me? Love them more. And go the gospel even more. And bless me too, Lord. And help them. And raise me up that I may requite them. That's the repay. I can go get them, Lord. I can. That's a king in the Old Testament under the law. Jesus said under the law to the Jews and still today, but in, under the law, I will curse. No, that wasn't. That was before the law, but still goes to, with the Jewish people. I will curse them that curse you. God, they're cursing us. Curse them. Right now, they're cursing those that believe the Bible and believe in the Messiah. Their Messiah. They're going to get their, their repayment of the tribulation period. When the church goes out before the tribulation period, it's called Jacob's, what did David say? Trouble. When blessed he that considereth the poor and the Lord will deliver him from the time of trouble, that's a tribulation passage. Because there will be Gentile nations that will take care of the Jew when he's poor. By this I know, David says, that thou favorest me. Now you see the Old Testament there? If I'm rich in mercy, God's going to make me rich. If I'm doing good with God, he's going to do me good. And if you're a Christian, you're suffering, you got troubles, you got problems, you got tribulation, you must not be living right. Yes, you are. You may be living right. You don't have a church of 4,000 billion people. You got a small little church of 20 people. We must be doing better. No, you're not. Your church, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is standing on the outside. The church with 20, the church with 10, the church with 5, the church with 25, the church may have 50, 100. If they're living right with God, the Holy Spirit's inside. The, the believer's hearts, not the building. Because my enemy does not triumph over me. Again. How do you explain Fox's Book of Martyrs? When that Roman Catholic Church, how do you explain the Inquisition? That there were people who died and people were tortured under the Inquisition unless they rechanted and denied Jesus. How do you explain the Congregational Church in New England that they confiscated property, they confiscated life, they would put people to the rack, they would beat people unless they believe in the Congregational God and not the God of the Bible. That they would call those people that were right and saved to call them separatists. Don't have anything to do with those people. They're oddball. We hate them because they don't go with our ways. That is not the teaching of Jesus Christ. That is not the teaching of the church. That's the teaching of God the Father under the nation of Israel. When he says, go in that land and wipe out all those idols, wipe out those Gentiles, and get rid of their gods. And when a church or an organization does that today, they are stealing from the Jews. That is wrong. That's a sin. And as for me, David, Thou upholdest me in my integrity and settest me before thy face forever. That's absolutely true for David. Matter of fact, David is going to be sitting before Jesus Christ as Jesus Christ sits on David's throne. A Jewish throne. Not a Rome throne. Not an not a Oval Office throne. Not a Moscow throne. Not a Buckingham Palace but the throne of David in Jerusalem. Blessed, happy, be the Lord God of Israel. Lord God of who? Lord God of who? You better have the Lord God of Israel. You can't be a Christian and be part of the KKK when they hate the Jews and don't want to have anything with the Jews. You can't be a Christian and be a Nazi 
and blame the Jews for everything in the world and despise them. For everlasting and to everlasting. That sounds like God's working with Israel forever and ever and ever. There are churches that steal the promises of Israel today and say God's all finished with the Jew. He's not. Amen. In case you didn't get it, and amen. And we conclude we conclude Psalms book one. Lord willing, we'll pick up Psalm book two. There is a nation above all nations of the world, Israel. And nobody wants to treat that Jew right. I'll curse them, God said. You want to help the Jew and, and, and be splendid to the Jew? I'll bless them. There's a, the, 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 Jew, the time of Jacob's troubles coming. The Jews are going to be slaughtered. They're going to be tortured. They're going to be, they're going to be public. No, they're going to be worldwide enemy number one. They are going to be hated by the devil, hated by the Antichrist, hated by the false prophet. They'll be hated by whatever nations. They're not going to get no health care. They're not going to get no food. They're not going to get nothing. And yet there are going to be nations out there that Jesus said, they're going to help those Jews. And they don't even know what they're doing. But they're going to help those people, not knowing what they're doing. And Jesus said, because you help my people. Come into the millennial rest with my people. And you hate my people and you tortured my people and you killed my people. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And as David, under the law, the nation of Israel, where God said, this is your land. Imagine America saying, this is my land. This is your land from the Purple Mountain. I don't know what Purple Mountains are. You got to be smoking something. It, uh, Massachusetts had to put the new, uh, I forget, the new city of hope, whatever it was called in Massachusetts. No, 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 no. No. Stop stealing from the Bible. Stop stealing from the Jew. There's only one nation above all nations. There's only one piece of land that God monitors. There's only one piece of land that God loves. And that piece of land, God said, belongs to the Jew. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. 12 tribes. Anything else is imitation. Anything else is imitation. And then you're lying against God. You're lying against God. The big problem with land in the world. James chapter 4, and we'll close. I'll tell you what this, this problem is. James says it. James chapter 4. Yeah, James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence comes wars, uh-oh, and fighting, uh-oh, among you. Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members. Ye lust, ye have not, ye kill, oh, that's war, and desire to have. And cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you have not. Because you ask not. See they don't go to God. Wars are by people. By religion. And by ungodly. And the heathen know. The Catholics started the war. You know the Christians. They're not Christians. Yes Catholics started wars. Yes, religion started wars. Why? Because they want a piece of land. We're not here for land. The only land we get is New Jerusalem. Glory to God.